Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for Krem News First at Four. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney is off tonight. This is about the first time in three weeks I've been anchoring here in the studio versus at my living room. I'm at home on the South Hill, so good to be back in house for a day. Washington Governor Jay Inslee just wrapped up a press conference on the state's coronavirus response. Let's get straight to our Regina on and Regina with Easter coming up this weekend. A lot of folks thinking about that on their minds this weekend. That's right, Mark. And the big message tonight was just to simply continue social distancing, especially in those big tourism spots. As we all know, as the weather gets better, the governor is saying if you don't cooperate, it is considered a misdemeanor. If you don't follow those guidelines, Inslee is also urging people to take precaution and also to to not gather in large groups. This weekend obviously is a time where we would like to have close communion with our families. It's a time we would like to have comfort physically being with them in the middle of Passover on Good Friday with our kids and grandkids wanting to have an Easter egg hunt. We understand those things, but this is really a moment uh, for all of us to redouble our efforts and our commitment uh, to our families and our communities to stay safe stay home and, and stay healthy. And the governor reiterating tonight what we're doing is actually working. These sacrifices that we're making is making a huge impact in saving lives. And as a quick reminder, all state parks and tra trails are closed at this time. Also, the Department of Fish and Wildlife saying fishing and shellfish harvesting on both public and private lands are still closed. They will reevaluate as soon as the stay home, stay healthy order is lifted. Live in the newsroom tonight, Regina on back to you, Mark. Regina, thank you very much. Retired Navy Admiral Raquel Bono was helping Spokane in the battle against coronavirus. Bono was recently appointed by Governor Jay Inslee as the director of the COVID-19 response to oversee the health care system in Washington. Today, she visited the Inland COVID-19 Command Center to discuss how PPE is distributed to the front lines. The ideal way of using personal protective equipment is that it should only be used once per patient. You don't want to necessarily reuse it unless you're able to decontaminate it. Bono says hospitals are receiving a lot of donations and support from companies like Amazon and Microsoft. Let's get to some of your other top headlines tonight. Sacred Heart Medical Center is taking part in clinical trials for an experimental drug for the coronavirus. Remdesivir is an experimental drug that's shown promise against some other coronaviruses. The drug is given through an IV. Sacred Heart is just one of several hospitals within the Providence Health System taking part in those trials. Spokane's Mayor Nadine Woodward joining other local leaders and calling on Governor Inslee to allow home construction to continue. In a letter sent to the governor, she says in part, we are in this together and so it is imperative that we recognize the unique challenges that each community across the state faces during this time. We implore you to reconsider your recent designation of residential construction activities as non-essential activities. Commercial and residential construction have been deemed non-essential under the order. A Spokane man is facing assault charges after police say he coughed on two officers. Spokane police say they were serving an arrest warrant at a home on the South Hill for the man's sister. And when the suspect came down the stairs, police said he intentionally coughed in each of their faces. This marks the second time an arrest was made in the Inland Northwest for coughing on police. New at Ford tonight, WSU has created a new interactive map to show which areas of the state are more at risk from COVID-19. Take a look. It was created by the Chase Lab, which is part of the Elson Floyd College of Medicine. And you can see here, based on darker red colors, which communities are more vulnerable and where people are more likely to develop serious complications from the coronavirus. Researchers used data from the U.S. Census and the Washington Health Department to highlight pockets of people over the age of 65 or those with underlying health conditions like heart disease and diabetes. It also shows areas of higher population where the virus is more likely to spread. One of those researchers told us it's important to remember that this isn't a look at where the virus is more prevalent, but rather where more people who are considered to be high risk are. It can also help determine where limited resources could be utilized. The White House Coronavirus Task Force is giving healthcare workers the green light to make their own decisions about therapy drugs for coronavirus patients. This means that the government will give access to potential therapies and drugs for hospitals to use. The president went on to say that they have made two large shipments of a malaria drug to treat COVID patients. Since Monday, we've deployed two major shipments of hydroxychloroquine from our national stockpile. It's going to various cities. 
Well, there still is debate within the medical community about using hydroxychloroquine to treat COVID patients. Vice President Mike Pence, meantime, says an antibody test will be available very soon, but he did not give a specific timeline. The IRS is now making it easier for Americans who did not file a tax return in 2018 or 2019 to receive federal stimulus money. A new web portal allows them to submit basic bank account information for direct deposits. The government says the first payments will go out next week. And to find that new IRS tool link, just head to our website. That's creme.com. Due to coronavirus and stay home orders, people looking for something to do are flocking to state parks in North Idaho. This comes as Washington state parks are closed during the pandemic. As Krem 2's Taylor Bido reports tonight, state parks say visitors from Washington are also accounting for the spike in traffic. You know, we're, we're, we're coping with it. Take a look. These photos were taken at Hayburn State Park on the southern end of Lake Coeur d'Alene. And these packed parking lots weren't photographed during the summer. No, these pictures are from this week. We you know, obviously we've seen a, a huge increase in our day use. With stay home orders limiting what people are allowed to do, people are flocking to Hayburn. Idaho State Parks are open, but camping at the parks is closed. Park staff are also encouraging social distancing for those who come here. We're pretty much the only thing available right now, and so people are definitely taking advantage of that. So much so that Hayburn saw 800 more cars visit the park last month compared to the same time last year. And they're not the only ones. We've seen an increase in visitation as other uh, outdoor recreation areas are not available. In Kootenai County, visitor numbers at Farragut State Park are up 40% compared to this time last year. With the influx of people looking to do just something for fun, staff have opened up additional day use areas and have socially distanced picnic tables and contributing to the crowds, people coming from across the border. Last weekend, we were experiencing probably 50 to 60 percent of our visitors were from Washington. Round Lake State Park in Bonner County is also busier than usual. They note that nice weather has played a role in bringing the crowds out, but it's not helping fishermen on this dock keep more than six feet apart. Um, some of the People hiking are hiking in larger groups than we'd like to see, so. Now keep in mind, state parks in Washington are closed, and no surprise, Hayburn State Park says about half of their visitors are from Washington. This year, when our parking lots are full and people are parked alongside of the road, it's, a, it's something we're not used to. <laughs> Again, hiking and bike trails are open here at the park. If you go, don't crowd others, but local officials are still encouraging you to stay home as much as possible. We really emphasize that uh, when people are recreating, they recreate locally. Staff admit that during these more than stressful coronavirus times, getting outdoors can be some of the best medicine there is. I mean, that's good for anybody's you know mental well-being. Taylor Vido, Grim 2 News. All right, let's take a break from the headlines for a moment and talk about the weather because the past two days have been fantastic here in the Inland Northwest. Let's get the Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry. He is live from his home on the South Hill. And Tom, man, tough to complain about this weather. Oh, it is absolutely great. And look at you back in the <laughs> studio with your tie. Uh, were you able to find your pants? I, I did. It took a while, right, to find them. And I almost forgot how to tie my tights. <laughs> it's been like three weeks, which feels like an eternity. <laughs> I know, but you did have three weeks of freedom. Yeah, that's true, uh, yes. <laughs> hey, look at this, you guys. Uh, just blue sky, really just great. And the lawns now are beginning to uh, green up. And I uh, got an email earlier today uh, that uh, talked about, hey, should we turn, if we're lucky enough to have in-ground irrigation, can we, uh, uh, you know, turn our irrigation lines on? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. So we'll be doing that as well. You can, I'm not sure you really need to be watering right now. We're going to get a little rain tomorrow, but you can certainly get everything up and going. Here we go. Let's go right to it. 69 degrees. That is the official temperature right now in Spokane, as recorded out at the airport. You can see the wind is out of the west at 10 miles per hour when we take, and that's a live picture over in Coeur d'Alene, by the way. So over the next 12 hours, the computer modeling has us uh, dropping down into the upper 50s by 9 o'clock tonight, and then down into the upper 40s as we get into, or mid to upper 40s, towards early tomorrow morning. So your weekend weather goes like this. We've got a cold front that's dropping in from the north. It's going to be quite a bit chillier. We'll look for wind gusts up to 30 miles an hour tomorrow. Some scattered showers, a better chance of those showers in northern Idaho and western Montana. I think it will lead to some snow showers in the mountains. Uh, we will not get all 
all day rain in Spokane, but we are going to see some periods of rain. And then we'll look for mostly sunny skies and 53 on Easter Sunday, but a bit of a cold start in the morning uh, for the Easter Bunny with a daytime with a morning low of 28 degrees. I do see a return of warmer weather, Mark. We'll talk more about that when we look at your seven day forecast, and that's coming up in just about. Uh, 10 hey, minutes. quick question for you, Tom. I, I think that's a sure. barrister wine bottle behind you. Has that been uncorked right now? Oh, uh, I don't, I don't know how that got there, but uh, oh no, it's corked. But uh, because it's only four o'clock, but after five o'clock, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a rule, part, part of our quarantine ritual. <laughs> yeah, all bets are off as soon as it's five o'clock strikes. Wine, and it's a great wine, and I love the name, Rough Justice. There we go, Tom. Thank you very much.